ranked, I have returned. We're gonna get this going and uh, see, well, see if we can get it going, I guess, this is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so, um, two strength uh, seems to work. Converts the given value to a string from whatever was going on there before. Seems happy with it. Uh, okay, so that gets us uh, a client. Uh, okay, so uh, basically, if this works, if everything is fine. Oh, no, 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 I still have uh, one other expect. So let's get rid of that. No, no dot expects because those, those, that'll cause the, uh, the, the backend service to uh, crash, to panic. Uh, don't want that. So, I mean, there are times you do want that. You know, want for something that's not an API endpoint, like our task worker, we just want to fail early. So the service can be restarted, things can be alerted, you know, those sorts of things. But for this case, for it, for this this handler, we don't want things to panic um, unless something goes in a completely unexpected direction. Um, but you know. Misconfiguration is uh, an error that can happen. And I think there's an argument there for uh, really what should happen is that if, actually, really what should happen is that this should be constructed when the service starts and be reused so that any issues here with constructing all this stuff fails when the service starts uh, and just like would cause a panic, would cause like a crash. Um, but we, we can look at doing that later. I, I want to have something that works first, and then we can you know, change things around. Uh, so this does a thing. Let's go back to our example here, actually, rather than taking Copilot's word for it. Um, oh, it is literally the same thing. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, let's see. Write this for us. Uh, Copilot. Hey, look, authorized URL. That that all looks fine. These are the same scopes. That one and that one and that one. Yep. Uh, and then we're adding a piece of functionality here. This PKCE challenge stuff is different. Uh, let's see. This needs to be like. To str. Wait, no, is this not right? Expected string found. Oh, it, it does need to be to string apparently. Does that make you happy? Yeah. Uh, so that gets us the authorized URL and the CSRF state. So here's here's a question, right? If the, I guess we have to return both of these to the client, the, the front end. Uh, it's our front end, um, because the, I we could store this like internal, like in the in Redis or something, and pass it around. Um, but. Um, I think we can pass it back to the front end, right? So that we'll, we'll do like URL and CSRF state well, is, is what we're going to return. Uh, and I think that is basically all that needs to happen, except for the fact that this assumes something that won't be the case. So we construct this PC PKCE code challenge and then PKCE code verifier. Um, but this is not going to be around. Did we pass that uh, redirect URI in, uh, in 
our construction here. Exit client now. I see. New takes all of these things and presumably also call um, set redirect URI to be that, which we know exists. Yep. Okay. So that was a missing piece. So the question is this verifier. What is it? It is. Yeah. Something that's used when we're doing the, the code, the, the exchanging the code. So we do need to serialize it. to do in this response is do that. Is that is that really a thing? Uh, leaking this value may compromise the security of the OAuth2 flow. Sounds good. Um, what is this not happy about? Status code bound to pull. Oh, I see. Um, dot into response. That's what we need to do if we're going to return these different shaped values. Because these are separate, so there's going to be one request that the front end is going to do to the back end to like get this information. And then it's going to do the redirect to Google, and then it's going to call back. It's going to post to here with the code it gets back from Google and these other values. Um, I don't know that I fully So the caveat one, uh, none of these requests are really authenticated in the sense of like between the front end and the back end, because none of this is currently designed to be something that is a bit accessible from the internet. It's all running locally on my machine. Um, so that, um, but I suspect thinking about like how you would do this in the context of a um, an application that was like accessible from the internet that had you know, multiple users and user accounts, and log logins and all those sorts of things. Uh, you might want to, you might not want to do this this way. Um, like we could probably store this information in some internal state and essentially create like a login flow, um, not a session, but a, uh, a temporary thing that would be stored and a reference to it will be returned to the front end uh, so that it could do that redirect or um, yeah, something something to that effect. So changing URL, URL here to authorize URL. I'm going to actually change the whole like schema of this response to kind of represent how this is changing. Uh, and I think we have captured all the things that we uh, want to do. 
Also, I had a Jadic Spectator that shouldn't have been there. But we're getting rid of it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, previous implementation goes away. That goes away. Uh, and this should be a, a mostly working backend like uh, uh, request handler. Turns this JSON. Uh, and then, hmm, can we in into response? Is there a way? I was thinking about like the type of the response body and defining what that is would be kind of interesting to do. But regardless, uh, what, what we do need to do is ooh, actually hmm let's do this let's make a uh, struct called um auth request there we go that looks like all of this uh so it's a url a srf token and a string shape will be different between what this returns and what this accepts. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So what I want to do, is I want to have a authorized URL, There's a URL, uh, and then CSRF state, the business CSRF state um, token. Yep. And KCE could verifier that is a string. And we will be able to derive serialize. And my thinking here is that what we can do is we can build uh, a response this way. So like more formalize. Like that. Uh, expect a string found string reference. Two string. Voila. Yeah. And then over here, we want to define another struct. Um, that it's going to have code, the state, and uh, what is it? PKCE code verifier, uh, which is just going to be a string, I guess. So these things are going to pass through. The front end is going to give them back to us. Uh, and the code is going to be what we get from. Um, Here's a question. So authorization code, does it implement deserialize? It does. CSRF token, it does. Yep. Okay, so it'll be most convenient to like represent that that way. I guess if I'm doing that, then I might as well also um, do that here. Yeah. And now I can say, hey, this auth code, uh, struct. This is this is the shape of the data coming in here. So now body is um, auth code. Import that. There we go. Okay. So uh, what changes? Well, some things. So uh, we need the client again. And then we do this, right? We do client.exchange code, body.code, set PKC verifier to be the verifier. Request is HTTP client. Uh, that's not a thing that actually exists here. But we can do uh, state.http client. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Um, is that 
that work? How, how, how much does that work? It doesn't like that. Um, expected FN wants a lot of your found request client. Uh, okay, so in our example, HTTP client is thing that's built. I probably want this redirect policy on um, my the HTTP client I use for everything. Thinking about it. Synchronously sends the request. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, isn't there a request async? There we go. Uh, let's see. So, state HTTP client. How do you feel about that? Well, you don't like that. Maybe for a different reason. Expected FN once, huh? Blocking client builder that build, so this should be. Synchronously sends the request to the authorization server and returns a feature. Okay, a request, HTTP client, HTTP request, await, map error, and find response. Is that not. shows you using I mean it is a request blocking client filter slightly different is there something in are we missing a feature and I suppose we can see a list of features Okay, well, uh, lunch is here. So I think I'm gonna wrap this up here uh, shortly. Uh, I will ponder this some more and see if I can figure out what I'm missing. I don't necessarily wanna make a separate blocking request client for this. Sure, there is something that I'm missing that explains why this doesn't work. But for now, we're gonna leave this as is. I am gonna do one thing, which is in where we're defining this HTTP client. Um, if I'm not already doing it, set that redirect policy to none, which I think won't break anything. Like we shouldn't be doing any red redirects in any of our requests. Uh, like our backend API request to, to various things. Um, nor do we, we don't want to be uh, redirected all, all across the internet uh, and anything that we're doing. Okay, so uh, thanks so much for coming out to the stream today. Uh, I'm gonna go over here. 
here. There we go. And uh, I think we're just going to wrap up the stream and uh, say uh, bye for now.